99.9 KEKB, Whale and Air, Dave, three at Country Jam. What's going on, man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I am doing great, and I really am delighted to have you here. I've been watching your career for years now, and I just, I'm really loving everything you're doing. You've got the tour going on now, as soon as you're off to Kansas. How's that going? Uh, things are going great, man. I mean, we're, we are, uh, the beginning of this year is fun because we're splitting time with the Fair and Festival season as well as, you know, we're out with Thomas Rhett. Um, and, but he's also out with Kenny Chesney, so we're all kind of playing like musical chairs, and it's, and it's been fun. It's kept us really busy and giving us a little uh, taste of a little bit of everything. So we're, we're enjoying it. How'd you enjoy picking up the ACL? That was really cool. Uh, I think you know, any time that you're you're receiving an award and being recognized by your peers, uh, it's really flattering. But uh, specifically, you know, the, the other names in that category were were uh, so deserving of that award as well. So I feel I feel a uh, feel very. Uh, appreciated by the country music community. It felt really good. Awesome. Now, one of the things I love about your career and your selection of music, in country, we love artists that find a signature sound, that find that niche. And you, with Mercy, in case you don't know, I feel you found it right off the bat. Were you looking for that? Did it happen? Did the music find you? Can you explain how that happened? You know, I think the, I think the reason that that's happening for me is because the whole team from the record label to my producer Dan Hubbs and my management team, uh, they they all said, hey, you, if you already have this thing that's working, uh, let's not change it, let's just enhance it, let's put Dan Huff on the record, let's put these songwriters in the room with you, let's not change it, let's like, let's make it better. And so uh, they, ne they never tried to change what I was already doing. They went, okay, we can identify something that we think will work, how do we make it as good as it can be? And so I, I didn't have to deal with uh, a whole lot of uh, you know, artist development. They just went. They went. This is. These are the things that will work. Let's hone in on those. And it made it really comfortable for me to be able to go. Okay, well, those are my strengths. So let me lean on those and and trust the team around me to do it. I mean, the, what Dan Huff did with the first record was nothing short of magic. What, what was it that they saw? What was that strength? In your you know, I think. <laughs> for better or for worse, you know, when I was in Los Angeles, what I was always told is, man, we like it, but it doesn't really sound like anything else. We don't really know what to do with it. Because in you know in Los Angeles and pop music they they want to they want it to fit into a certain box mm -hmm. and then I got to Nashville and they went it doesn't sound like anything else we can work with that now, so, me, if I may when you left California you went straight to Nashville right I did okay had you not done that would you have made it I don't know I mean the funny thing is I left California at a time when country music hadn't really hit there yet ah. but within my first year in Nashville country music exploded on the West Coast. So I don't know if that would have changed for me as an artist. I don't know if that was just a change for the fan base and not for the artist base. Uh, what I do know is I got a record deal within my first year living in Nashville and I don't know that I would have been recognized by the country music community and the executives at Big Machine had I stayed in California. So if it came to you today and said, do I need to go to Nashville, would you say yes? I mean, if they're trying to, if they're trying to have a country music career, I would tell them that your odds are much better and it is a much more um, accommodating community for a country music artist in Los Angeles. And one thing, if I may, one, as a programmer, one thing I love about you and, and your music, not only the, the song selection, but the lyrics, the production, and the actual performance. Artists, again, pick up a signature. Hank did it, Clint Black did it back in the early, well, late 80s, early yeah. 90s. And I think you're doing it right now. And sincere, and authentic, and vulnerable. And it's one vulnerable. Absolutely. I think that's a flattering word for a country music artist. Is that what you're yeah, looking we, for? We use the word vulnerable all the time. I think um, you want to appeal to every part of the country music audience. Uh -huh. And uh, coming in as like a big ex-athlete, um, if I were to just sing the stereotypical kind of surfacey stuff, which by the way, there is definitely a place for that. Uh -huh. People want to party and have fun and feel good and not think about things too much sometimes. Um, but I think somebody in my position, I think, A, that is who I am. I'm very hard on my sleeve, vulnerable in the first place. But showing your fans that vulnerability, I think, allows them to more easily uh, like let their guard down and connect and relate with you as a person through your music. And so I think that's been a big reason that we've got men and women alike coming out to the shows. Uh, because it makes dudes go, oh, like, like you said, the word vulnerable is great. He's a vulnerable, normal like he goes through the same crap that we do, you know, and uh, and I think that's what you need to show people. I think that's how you connect with music is by showing people like I've been there too.
Outstanding. Well, you're about to perform for the best audience in the world. Can't I'll wait. vouch for that personally. They are jazzed to have you here. I wish you a great show. Thank you, brother. And have fun in Manhattan. Thank you so Kansas. much. I appreciate Thank you. you. Ray Young. Thank you.